I'm delighted to welcome you, Lord Green, Stephen, to Edinburgh, and we are really pleased that you've come to address the Asia Scotland Institute today here in the premises of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. It's a great pleasure for us. And I wondered if, um, knowing, I think, as you do, what the Asia Scotland Institute was set up to do, namely to help and encourage the future leaders of Scotland to engage with Asia, uh, if you feel that's helpful, first of all, to the cause that you have been pursuing. Well, Roddy, let me first say I'm delighted to be here. It's a great pleasure to have been asked. Uh, and the answer is quite simply, yes, of course it is. Um, there is nothing more important, I think, for Scotland uh, than to uh, play its role in the wider world. Um, and the big fact about the 21st century is the rise to economic and political prominence mm -hmm. of uh, a whole number of Asian countries. Um, there's a long tradition, of course, of Scottish involvement in Asia. I used Indeed. to work for a bank that was founded by Scots in the Indeed. Far East. And uh, so it's a great pleasure to be here to underscore that importance, absolutely. Thank you, that's wonderful. As you reflect upon your time as Minister, um, and as you're coming towards the, t the date when you will hand over to your successor, um, what do you feel of the, the major achievements you and your team have been able to uh, attain during that period? Well, uh, it's a work in progress, firstly. I think that the uh, challenge of reorienting the whole of the British economy uh, Scotland in particular, the UK in general, mm -hmm. towards a stronger international engagement, more yeah. and more British firms taking their goods and services, what they can offer around the world. Uh, this is a big challenge. Uh, it's not going to be solved in two years. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things I find myself saying frequently to ministerial colleagues, the media and anyone else who listen, mm -hmm. is that this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. We have to stick at this for a long period of time. But the opportunities are enormous. And, and what I would say, after two and a half years of uh, this job, uh, it's been a hugely stimulating, exciting uh, role. I believe we have uh, succeeded in making UK Trade and Investment a very user-friendly organisation, uh, supportive of British companies looking to engage with the wider world, UK Export Finance, uh, the Government Guarantee Agency that supports the financing of contracts won in overseas markets. Yeah. These things, I think, are now in better shape now and with strong morale. Uh, and the Foreign Office, finally, it, our posts around the world are very commercially focused. Um, we need to keep at this to ensure that we are constantly refreshing the commercial knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but the, strate the strategy and the, uh, uh, the, the direction of the government to officials is very clear. Yeah. This is critical to the government's, uh, to the country's yeah. economic strategy. Thank you. As you know, in Scotland particularly, the vast majority of corporates are SMEs. Uh, and I think you have quite strong views on the importance of getting SMEs engaged with these markets, since there are so many of them, and therefore by definition they ought to make a great impact and add value. Could, could you comment on particular messages, which probably will be picked up later today, on, on those running small and medium-sized enterprises? Well, I do absolutely believe that uh, small and medium-sized businesses are to the heart of this. They create most of the jobs. Uh, they are uh, the country's future, therefore in terms of the young getting employment. Um, they have opportunities. They have a, a huge range of specialisms. Yeah. I mean, uh, yesterday I was in Aberdeen meeting uh, a number of SMEs in the oil and gas sector, as well as in the professional services sector that supports them. And that's just one example. Uh, the financial services sector in Scotland, the life sciences, uh, the offshore uh, 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 renewable energy, mm. etc. There is a whole series of areas where SMEs are playing an important role, and where the world is waiting for the specialist expertise, the goods and services we. we can offer. So getting SMEs yeah. to take that step into the international mm. markets, uh, there's nothing more important. And finally, uh, I suppose the question, we, we, we believe very strongly that the critical part of our mission is to educate and inform tomorrow's leaders, young people, young people at the start of their professional careers, emerging from business schools and from universities. What would your advice to young people be um, about the skills they need to acquire and what they need to do to be part of this effort to re-engage with these markets? In, in a way, it's a, it's a quite general-sounding answer um, because I don't think there's a specific skill. I mean, clearly, the, the country is short of engineers, for instance, yeah. um, but that's not the, the real answer. The real answer is think international when you are uh, at university thinking about uh, apprenticeships or whatever it might be. Um, how are you going to equip yourself to compete in a world that is becoming international yeah. more and more with every passing year yes. and where Asia in particular mm. is going to be so much the economic driver of a lot of what happens in the world? Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you again. Thanks for joining us for this, for this discussion pleasure. now. And we're, again, delighted that you're here and wish you well in the future. Thank um, you very much. And uh, in whatever you choose to do. So thank, thank you very much.